Hi everyone, welcome back to another vlog. We're back in the arcade room because we're about two weeks away from building. It's my son's birthday this weekend, so I've really pushed hard to get the arcade room finished because he wants to have his friends over for a party. But the inevitables happen. My Outrun 2 has died. Only one of them, thank God. This is the Outrun 2 motherboard, known as the Chihiro or the Cheerio, depends where you're from. It's actually the original Xbox board, made in 2003. So that's it there, and there's a Sega board that sits on top of that. Then you've got a RAM and a network board to link them up. So my Cheerio died, or my Chihiro, and now I had the um, unfortunate task of finding one of these things, and it wasn't easy at all. Okay, so I've bought a whole new Chihiro system. The problem is, because I live in Australia, we get the export version. But these machines are the Japanese versions, like this one here. And I can't link them up. So I have to somehow tell the motherboard that you're now a Japanese version. And that was no easy task. I looked on the internet everywhere, and to my surprise, there's just hardly any information on it. However, I found a way out of it. A friend sent me out a chip that I can plug in the Cheerio system and change the region code. Let's hope it works. So what I've had to do is put the chip inside of the Chihiro. This is usually where the security chip goes. For instance, Outrun security chip. That's Outruns. That's the security chip that's going to change the region. Let's give it a try. So what we've got to do is enter the menu. Go to system information. Now you'll still see export. What we've got to do is push the service button 15 times. you'll see a code come up, and that's probably the gamer ID code. Then we've got to push it a further 15 times, or 30 times, I'm not exactly sure yet. There we go. So, select with service. So now what we've got to do, unknown, Japan, and exit. So that's it, we've done it. Okay, so I've got all the machines fired up and as you can see, it says checking network now. There you go, connection established. All is good with the world again. So, Outrun's finally up and running, or Outrun 2, and um, yeah, it's good because kids love it, they can play four players. Okay, this is Star Wars Trilogy Arcade made by Sega in 1998. And in 1998, they didn't have plasmas or LCDs and um, CRTs certainly weren't big enough. So with the deluxe model, the DX model, they used rear projection, um, rear projection TV. So it's basically uh, three guns, but I'll work backwards. So the uh, screen that usually goes on the front here is known as a Fresnel. And this is a Fresnel here. Okay, and looking from that side, you can see it's a very unusual type of um, bit of perspex or uh, plexiglass. Um, and it's got glass on the front and the Fresnel's just behind that. And what it does is it, it stops the light and allows you to see the image from the other side. So instead of light passing through it like glass, it, it kind of, um, it has these little um, uh, micro grains that stop the light. And you've obviously got the mirror there and the mirror's there basically to reflect these things. Oh, God, it's heavy. And these are basically known as guns or CRT guns. Um, these are the, uh, basically what your image comes in on. And it's red, green and blue, I think. Yep, there's red at the bottom, green in the middle and blue up the top here. I'll just put that down. And, um, what they've done, there's also a bunch of electronics that, uh, that have taken out just recently. Um, and the video signal obviously goes through the electronics into the guns, hits the mirror on the Fresnel, you see a picture. The problem is the guns are susceptible to burning, uh, much like a plasma, but heaps worse. And over time, you'll get things that are stagnant, like the high score, the score, uh, the Sega logo or Sega logo and the Star Wars Arcade Trilogy or Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. Keep getting that the wrong way around. 
Anyway, that happens and the pitch is pretty much cactus, it's gone. So, what a lot of people do, um, and you can see this on different uh, like YouTube um, and forums, is they replace it usually with a 32 inch LCD. Um, not comfortable in doing that because you're changing the aspect ratio, that's the first problem. Secondly, you're bringing it in from a nice 50 inch to a 42 inch, and even that would be less. It actually works out to 36 inch, because if you're keeping the original aspect ratio of a widescreen and all that, heaps of problems. So I actually started to say, well, I'll put a projector and use the same um, principle in bouncing off the screen, off the glass, off the mirror, onto the Fresnel, but I had my own issues with doing that. It needed to zoom. Anyway, coming for a long story short, I've had to buy a Philips LCD, and um, this Philips is 46 inch. It's a commercial panel. The picture looks amazing. I've already had a quick look. So I'm about to build it, put it in the screen. It's gonna take me probably half the day. So I thought I'll quickly show you guys and give you a look at it. Um, I've, it's about 20 mil too big. So I've got to slightly stretch out the cabinet to fit it in. It's the big, it's the, like I searched everywhere for it. So it's the biggest one I could find that'll just fit in the cabinet without breaking it. And yeah, 46 inch and I've never seen anything over 42. So at least I'm gonna have that. So I'll stop the camera now. I'll do my work and we'll come back and have a look. Okay, so I finally finished it and that's the LCD panel, the Philips there. Um, as you can see, it looks very, very good and I've tried to give it um, less height up the top and a bit more at the bottom because you've got these big speakers here. Um, and I'm actually, I'm flawed at how good it actually looks. So what I've tried to do is stretch it a little bit on the top and bottom um, and give myself a little bit more screen on the sides because 4x3 is probably around there. So I've just brought it in a bit closer so I get more screen closer to the original. But yeah, yeah, I'm just amazed. And that took me about two hours to do. So I've put all the brackets there. I should have filmed it, but that's okay. You get the point. So I'll be doing this also to my Daytona 2s, and they're the full DX cabinets, the Deluxe. And they've got the 50 inch projectors. Again, they look crap. But yeah, I'm, I just can't get over how good it looks. Um, yeah, I've tried another TV, a uh, cheaper brand, and it looked pathetic. That's why it kind of put me on, but when a friend of mine, Daytona, put me on to this um, commercial panel, Philips commercial panel, I was, um, I was amazed. So yeah, thanks to Daytona and thanks to um, Matt for getting me this from Philips. Um, couldn't be happier. Well, that's it for now and I'll see you on the next vlog. Bye for now.